Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode two of Star Trek Mata Hari. For those who are unfamiliar, Mata Hari is a tabletop role-playing game that uses the Star Trek Adventures rule set by Modifius Entertainment. Uh, we are set in the year 2411 aboard an Eclipse class in the Shackleton Expanse. We are also in the same canon as my Fenrir game, which runs on Tuesdays. You don't need to have watched Fenrir to enjoy this game, but you might catch a few references and nods if you do. You can catch the VODs for both Matahari and Fenrir on my YouTube and most of the popular podcast solutions. Really, before we get into introductions, I just have one quick thing to say, and that's uh, whatever support you provide the stream, whether that's chatting in chat, follow, sub, donations, bits, whatever. It's all greatly appreciated, especially in uh, times like this where we're all stuck inside going mad just very slowly. But uh, with that said, let's go ahead and uh, have everyone go around and introduce themselves. So we'll start with the captain. Hello, my name is Dare Wolf, Charles Wolf, um, a.k.a. Malik Javan, and I'm playing the captain. All right. Up next, we have our first officer. Yep. Uh, my name is Nikhil. Uh, I play Jaro Rian, the first officer. All right. And up next is our security officer. Hello, I'm Mike. I play Tave Jennings, Romulan Chief of Security. And then we have our intelligence officer. Hello, I am Alex. I play Lieutenant Commander Prawl, the Cardassian Intelligence Officer. And then our Science Officer. Hi, I'm Jeff, and I'm playing Jax Jensen, the Science Officer. And last but not least, we have our Chief Engineer. I'm Brian, and I'm playing Jemmer Tolayup, the Chief Engineer. Very good. And with that said, let's go ahead and run the intro. Welcome back. So, if you are unfamiliar with the way I usually do things, is that for Star Trek Adventures, I like to have an opening monologue that has been prepared or read by the players. And tonight, that is going to come from Mr. Jennings, our security officer. So, Mr. Jennings, if you'd take it away. Chief of Security Log, Stardate 88721.3. Uh, ain't no secret I was reluctant to come back to active duty on a starship. To be honest, I was hoping they'd post me to some backwater colony and I could spend my time throwing thieves in jail and throwing back the bottle, preferably at the same time. But no, they got stuck me on what has been the most advanced ship in the fleet. And now I know I got the nose of a fighter and a drinker, but my nose tells me something is wrong with this oh so very advanced ship. The first thing that's gonna need to be no upstream, the first thing that's gonna need to be investigated is what's wrong with the ship itself. The replicators are hilariously off kilter, or at least they were until they replicated phasers and sucked all the fun out of the room. And I must be getting rusty, but that Klingon targ on deck eight nearly got the better of me. But the biggest problem with this ship has to be the captain. Uh, my previous log will confirm that I was excited to have a rising captain, certainly more excited than it was to work with the Cardassian. Now I'm starting to wonder if maybe he should have stuck to body massages and horgons. That man is reckless, and this is coming from a cowboy. In my opinion, we did not probably look over the gas before waking it up. One quick scan and our captain hits the button. Talk about letting the Andorian bull out of its cage without even peeking at its horns. We had no idea the capability of that thing. It could have nearly wiped out the entire senior staff. Instead, the ship beat it to the punch. And if you think that's bad, we haven't gotten to the Herogen yet. Uh, everywhere, cloaked, they had no idea. We could have gotten a little closer, scanned them, better assess the situation. What does the captain do? 
drops out of cloak, throws up the shield, sputters something ridiculous. And then when they do what you'd expect, he flat out erases them from the stars. Uh, now, I know I pulled the trigger, so that's my sin to live with. I know just following orders is as laughable a cop out as it is ancient, but I ain't trying to mutiny on my first mission with this crew. So here we are, hanging out with a race that the Borg called the Boogeyman, in a ship that's trying to kill us, and a captain that seems eager to throw us at the first airlock. Uh, it's time for another bottle. And luck. Very nice. I love the uh, I love the captain's expression during all of that. It was classic. Mm, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't want to look at that. I couldn't keep a straight face. With <laughs> all right. So our first scene is actually going to be in the very same science lab where you woke up Alethea. And with uh, Mr. Jennings in the science lab is Lieutenant Commander Tuleyup and Lieutenant Commander Jensen. And you all are investigating... What's going on with the replicator? So let's start there. Okay. Gentlemen, I am not familiar with this problem with the replicators. Explain. Well, we're going to have to probably do at least some kind of diagnostic on the system to see what kind of interference may have came in. Um, are we sure it's just the replicators? I mean, the, that clay on targ was not a replicated thing; that was a holographic thing. Well, it could be a it could be a system wide thing. Uh, yeah, that's probably a safe bet. We should... Perhaps we have computer run level nine diagnostic. How long does that take? Computer, how long will level nine diagnostic take? There's that sort of negative beep, and it says there is no such configuration for a level nine scan. Levels available are one, two, three, error, five. Perfect. We may have to do a manual diagnostic, which could take a lot longer, unfortunately. Are we in a rush to go anywhere? Uh, not to my knowledge. I would probably be advisable not to until we can figure out what's going on with the computer systems. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, I'll be happy uh to have your help, uh, Lieutenant Commander Prawl. All right. Yeah. So uh, let's do it this way. Uh, whichever one of you does the scan or the check of the computer, um, we're going to play to your strength here. So for Jennings, if Jennings does it, that's going to be an insight and security. If Jensen does it, that's an insight science. If Toleop does it, that is an insight engineering. And the difficulty on this would be a two, and you may be assisted by one other person. And we got a higher insight than eight. We got an 11. <laughs> Mine is seven, so you get to do it. Okay. So you said it's insight science? Correct. And I have assisted a Assisted by security. And I uh, let's see if I can get this thing up. There it is. And I do have a focus in computers. Most definitely would apply here. All right. So see. Is the ship rolling here at all? Uh, no, the ship is not rolling for this one, but the ship may roll very soon, is what I would say. All right. All right. So here goes nothing. Okay, that's a good start. That's four <laughs> successes. <laughs> <laughs> so you said the difficulty was two? Yeah, so that's already two momentum, and then whoever's getting the assist. Uh, security? Inside security, yeah. Re refresh me. Say again? Uh, refresh me on... Uh... Oh, I know. I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong screen. Just one second. And you would have a focus for this one, Jennings, looking at your focuses. Insight security. Mm -hmm. uh, two? Uh, just one, because you're assisting. Oh, I see. Okay. Click well focus. Yes. Um... Wow. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> it's a total of six successes. You guys have four momentum to start. Apparently, I needed to start spending threat. Uh, <laughs> So here's what you guys learn uh, for your efforts. You learn that there is, and this is going to sound like a cop-out, but let me finish. There is something wrong with the computer. And I don't just mean 
oh, like it's a corrupted memory core or it's, you know, some rogue program. I mean, on a fundamental level, like going all the way down to the transistors, like really far down in the scale, there is something terribly, terribly wrong. And what I would say is that based on your number of successes, you're able to tell that this isn't a Starfleet computer core. Like, it's a good proximity, for one. Like, it's a good facsimile. But it's not Starfleet. Mm -hmm. Someone has managed to get a non-Starfleet computer core installed on the Matahari, which has implications. And Jensen, since you are a science officer, you do have a free question. Oh, yeah. Uh, is there any way to identify maybe the origin of said computer core? You can no. indeed. The answer is the Romulans. Uh, well, seeing as how my, my uh, security officer, uh, security chief is right here, I'd like to inform him that uh, of all of this and say, we've got a serious problem. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you do. You want me to shoot it with a phaser? I don't think shooting it with a phaser, but we do need to determine how it got here and who's responsible. Yeah. I am concerned with more important question. What do I do now? I don't know a lot about Romulan computers. Do I do a system refresh? <laughs> Just set uh, it back to factory standard. Yeah. Uh, how much do we know about Romulan computer systems? And Before anybody looks at me, I grew up on a Federation world. I have no idea. To say, oh, hold on. See what I got going on. Yeah, Go. I was gonna say. So there's two ways you can go about this. You can either do a reason science with a computer's focus at a difficulty of two, or oh, yeah. you could just simply access the computer and ask the computer. I mean, we could try that. There's no reason not to. We could try just asking the computer what's going on. It should know who installed it. Yeah, sure. I'm sure a Romulan computer wouldn't lie to us. Go for it. I mean, if we don't like the answer, I can always try and do a deeper dive into it. All right. So, uh, Mr. Jaro, I'd like you to roll for the ship here. Uh, go ahead and roll the ship's computers and command, please. All right. Huh. Oh, I put that in, but nothing. Uh, let me hmm. maybe roll 20s being a little slow. I think so. Oh, oh there it goes. Sorry. OK, Sorry. well, you needed to roll two dice, so that works. Uh, okay. So with that one success, that is enough. When you well, let me ask this. What is the very specific wording on the questions you are answering, asking the computer? Um. Uh, okay, let's let's think about this. Uh, what what do we exactly want to know from it, security officer? Why is it here? Who put yeah. it here? Yeah, I, I guess. Uh, yeah. Um. Uh, who? Yeah. Uh, name of the installer. Name of the installer of the computer core. Okay. So the computer spits back a list of people at Utopia Planitia that were responsible for in the installation of your computer core. Now, Mr. Tolayup, I'd like you to roll me an insight engineering, please. Difficulty of two. We got momentum. Uh, I have a computer's focus. Mm -hmm. Ray. Oh, we want to spend a momentum. We have four. He doesn't need it. He's got two. Uh, He's good. To lay up, you're looking at the list oh. of engineers that installed this thing, and you spot a bigger problem. About half of the people listed retired, quote-unquote, <laughs> about 10 years ago. Gentlemen, I suspect we have bigger problem. There are oh. many of these names that are not operative engineers at the moment. So this is, this is inaccurate information. So you're saying someone doctored the information? And not well. 
So probably not Romulan. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I guess we need to really dissect this information, maybe look at some source code. It's kind of hard to doctor source code. I will have team of engineers this uh, do a level five diagnostic manually. And uh, I guess, uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, um, we may want to also inform the captain of what's uh, going on. It's a good idea. He might want to test up the self destruct. <laughs> 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 oh, is this human humor? <laughs> I don't uh, understand. <laughs> However, uh, this this may bring up a a question. Do while we do want to bring Captain into loop, do we want to panic rest of crew? I wouldn't think so. Uh, I was to say we probably don't want to say anything until we have more to report. But I'd be curious to. If you want more assistance, I can I can uh, offer any assistance I can. Well, I will keep engineering team in the dark then. All right. Uh, perhaps you and I probably just need to do our digging on our own then. Certainly. All right. Who will report to captain? I'll go. All right. So just give me a moment here to clean up that there bridge. All right. So, uh, Captain, we're going to cut to your office where you are enjoying some fancy bubbling beverage of your choice. Uh, it's probably about then that you hear a chime at your door. Enter. And in steps, not Jennings, but your first officer, Com Commander Jaro. Now, Jaro, you're here because the captain summoned you. Captain, he called for me? Captain, you I did not call for him. Did not call for you, Commander Jaro? God damn it, is it the ship again? What what what's going on? The the replicators are going crazy. I got a I got an alert that said you called for me. Uh, uh, the ship the ship is, is is it's messing with us. It's trying to kill us. Uh, I'm I'm sorry. No, don't apologize. I I have a team looking into it right now. I'm hoping to hear back from them very soon. Um, it's going to be fine. Don't don't let it worry you. This is a minor inconvenience. But since you are here, I want to talk with you a little bit about our engagement um, with the Herodron. I am... Have a seat, please, please. Have a seat. I welcome you in. Stand up. And I pace around the room a little bit. I've been second guessing some of my actions and I feel I may have re reacted harshly or rashly during the time. The excitement or the fear of combat, I think, got to me. And, you know, I, I don't exactly know what I'm even trying to say right now. Yeah, Captain, Captain, have you, have you, have you been in combat before or, or have you been in combat often? Often, no. Before, yes. And never as a senior officer. This was my this was my first engagement as a commander of a starship in combat. I I killed hundreds of people with with just one word. And I I don't know how to say it. I'm questioning whether or not I'm fit for duty. You Well 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 let's make let's make one thing clear. It's always great to debrief. It's always great to, to learn from our actions and get better. But you can't forget the fact that you also saved hundreds of lives by acting decisively. We made, we made mistakes. And it's my job as a first officer also to, to stand up to you or call you out in a situation when we are making such mistakes. So if you did anything wrong, I think I'm as much to blame for not for not speaking out either. So I think instead of looking to blame any one person for this and what happened, I think we should work together to to to, to figure out 
how we can do better next time. What I will say though is we do need to reassure the crew that um, that that their voices will be heard as well. I agree. And if I may interject real quickly, Mr. Prawl, what would you be yes, doing sir. about uh, three or four hours after Alpha Shift? What would Mr. Prawl be doing right about now? Probably going to get some food. Okay. So, Captain, Commander, you know, you're seated having a lot of you know, pleasant conversation, talking about, you know, did I do this? Did I do this right? You know, very important conversation. When all of a sudden, materializing to the right of the captain's desk is Mr. Prawl. And Mr. Prawl, <laughs> you look around, realize you've been transported to the captain's ready room. You don't know why. Mr. Prawl, why did you just materialize in my ready room? I would like to know that myself, sir. Ah, uh, this goddamn ship. I stand up and, like, flip my, my chair over. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Uh, Captain to, uh, uh, to Lieutenant Prawl. Or not Lieutenant Prawl. Uh, 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 I'm Lieutenant, right here, sir. Uh, Lieutenant, <laughs> thank you. Captain to uh, Tolep. Tolep here. What is the situation with the uh, with the ship? Uh, Commander Lieutenant Prawl just materialized in front of me. Commander Jaro just got a message from me when I didn't call to him. Do you have any update on what's happening with our ship? Uh, we did find make some concerning findings, Captain. Uh, the security chief is on his way to make a direct report. Uh, I am not comfortable revealing anything over an open comp channel. Understood. Captain to the security officer. So, Mr. Jennings, you do get a, a chirp on your communicator, but you're already right outside the office. However, instead of the doors opening, they give that sort of beep that says, no, I don't want to open. Uh, yes, Captain. I need you to meet me in my ready room immediately. Bit of an issue with that, Captain. What do you mean there's a bit of an issue? I start knocking loudly on the door. <laughs> By the... <clears throat> I stand up. Computer, open, open door to my ready room. The door does not open, but loud Klingon opera begins resounding <laughs> through your office. Oh, Lord. Oh, dear. I move over to the manual override to open the door. I leverage it, pry the door open, and I... So Jennings, the moment the door opens, just blasted with Klingon opera. <laughs> oh, Computer, shit. end the music! <laughs> It continues playing, but not Klingon opera. It's now some Earth ska. Oh, so maybe better. Maybe better. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's 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 meet in the uh, let's let's meet in the uh, in the conference room. Follow me. We're gonna go meet in the conference room. Hopefully, it's quiet. Okay. <laughs> so, as right you... with you. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. As I'm going right along with him. Yeah, just I, pr commit, uh, Lieutenant Prawl. Just everyone with me. We need to debrief here. Okay. So as you all are walking to the conference room on the other side of the CIC, um, I would like, let's have Mr. Jaro roll for this one. And Lieutenant Commander Prawl also roll for this one. I would like both of you to roll me an insight and a security, please. Difficulty of two. Cool. Would I have an applicable focus? Let's take a look. Uh, yes, you would. How about would I? Yeah, I'm looking at you now. Uh, you would also have one because you both have investigation. Ooh. All right, well, that's a complication. That'll be interesting. And then there's Jaro's. I missed it. Okay, so Jaro, you succeed on this. Prawl, you have something going on. All right, so Jaro, as you're walking across the CIC, uh, you notice that you know how you have that hollow table in the middle that displays basically incoming comms and all that? Right. It's displaying a complex 3d object uh almost like uh an old windows screensaver if you remember the old like pipes thing where the pipes yeah. would just keep randomly generating 
Um, it's sort of like that. And whoever is currently at the tables, you know, you know like tapping the, the console, like, the hell is it? Why? Why is this here? Um, however, uh, with the complication on Prawl's side, Prawl, you maybe notice this too, but as you're walking across the CIC, you quite literally run smack dab into the door that leads to the conference room. It literally slams shut ahead of you and you just run headlong into it. I'm gonna try and see if it'll open after I regain my senses from walking into it. It does, but it also does one of those things where it opens and then closes and then opens. And then it does this a few times where it just oscillates between open and closed. And then it finally stays open. I'm going to give it a few seconds, make sure it's actually open before walking through it. Okay. And Captain, the there's something is... seriously wrong with this ship. Yeah. I'm beginning to realize that myself. Right. And I'm going to ask uh, whoever's at the, at the hologram uh, station how long it's been doing that. Uh, Ensign Raven reports uh, it's been doing that for pretty much the last hour, sir. Just And you can't get rid of it? No, uh, we've run a level two diagnostic, and the computer says that it's displaying normally. Commander Jennings, what do you have to report from main engineer? This is not the ship you think it is, Captain. This uh, computer is a Romulan computer. That's all. At least that's what we've determined. It is a off-brand facsimile of a Starfleet system put in by ghosts. Sorry, what? What part are you uh, iffy on, Captain? Um, the fact that we have a Romulan computer on board, a Federation starship, and you yep. said something about ghosts? Yeah, uh, people that were no longer with Starfleet 10 years prior were the ones who installed it. How they got security clearance is left up to the imagination. So I'm assuming that that information was doctored and someone wanted to hide the fact they installed this computer on our ship. Seems fair, Captain. Sounds like tall we are. Could Excuse be. Me? Could be, but would Tal Shiar use a Romulan computer? It just seems. It just seems a obvious. Little a little, little on the nose. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Lieutenant Commander Prawl, do you have sure. any idea of where we could even begin to investigate? Who, why, what, when? Help me, please. I'm at a loss here. Best I could think of would be we go and try and find what logs there are of construction dates. See if we can get anything from Narendra Station, what they have on our construction. How far are we from Narendra Station right now? Uh, You could be there if you went maximum warp or engaged your QSD, you could be there by the end of the day. Um, but if you are following speed limit rules, two or three days. I would like to, um, I'm going to, uh, Edson Raven. Edson Raven, this is the captain. Um, set a course for Narendran Station. Um, captain, warp five. Yes. If I, if I may. Uh, are we sure we want to engage warp engines with everything that's going on? Are we sure this isn't just going to flood all the decks with ice cream? You're right. We should try and figure out what's going on before we make any rash, rash judgments. Uh, Raven, belay that order. Um, just set us an impulse towards the station. Just keep us in that direction, please. I'm sorry, sir. I'm not understanding what you're saying. Are you messing with the Universal Translator at all? Can you even understand me? To parler français? And Captain she Major literally, Wolf. like, coming through the comms, I don't know enough French to do it, but she's now speaking French through the comms. Hello, Capitaine. Je n'ai pas compris ce que vous avez dit. Est-ce que vous pouvez me répéter? Parce que, comme ça va maintenant, le translateur universal ne me dit pas ce que vous avez besoin de me dire. You may have one momentum for that. That's fantastic. <laughs> you speak fluent French. Hell yeah. I love it. 
I'll find out later that he told my chat to go fuck themselves or something. But, you know. <laughs> I genuinely just repeated what you said, pretty much. Anyway. Thank you. I appreciate it. I am going to go and try and pry open the door, lean out there, yell at, yell at uh, Raven, not aggressively, but just Raven, impulse, towards her into station, do not engage warp. And then I'll step back in, probably get hit in the head with the door. <laughs> Actually, no. When she goes to begin sort of steering the ship that way, there is a sudden shift as the inertial dampeners try to compensate. But if you will imagine that the ship normally, you know, it's on a standard axis. What's happening is it's, I believe it's the Y axis, uh, or maybe it's the X axis. Yes, yeah, the X, where the ship literally does a 90 degree sort of jolt so that now you are perpendicular with the plane you just were on. So... Again, in space, it doesn't really matter which way you're aligned, but the actual force and sudden nature of the shift. I need everybody, including those who are not in this current scene, to roll me a fitness and a security, please, at a difficulty oh, of one. Jesus. This could not. This is probably bad. And if you have anything like survival or athletics. Fitness or and what? Fitness and security. Oh, I'm about to get hurt. Oh, I am not gonna so fit. I was gonna get real bad. Yeah. Yeah. No yeah. focus is here. Hand to hand combat. What? Can I cross my god the spatial dampers? <laughs> I mean, we'll potentially. All right, so Jensen fails. Jaro gets some momentum. Prawl succeeds. Sorry, fitness and what? Oh, thank God. Fitness and security. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Would I have an applicable focus? You yeah. would. You okay. Would. I'll give it to you. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, damn. I'm too I tell, good. I tell you what, because you've got the floating momentum, because you're capped at six right now, if you give me the floating momentum, uh, we can say that uh, certain Jensen, because it was Jensen that failed, right? Yep. Um, mm -hmm. yep. I will say that uh, through the magic of narrative, Jensen does not fail this. <laughs> but yeah, so all of you catch yourselves as the ship violently shifts. And... Uh, Raven literally just sort of shouts back at you, Captain. Uh, sir, uh, impulse just went down. Step away from the from step away from the console. Don't touch anything. She just, steps just away. Don't you know, touch anything. Hands up, and then all of a sudden, uh, coming up instead of the pipe simulation, Captain. I have a very personal question to ask you. Did you ever in your career, uh? do dancing or music or absolutely so you know I the flute you describe... that Picard plays oh, no. yeah. I want you to describe oh, yeah. the most embarrassing situation that the captain has been in that he so the captain's dance. on the hollow deck right okay. and he's wearing a speedo and he's playing that flute that Picard plays and he's doing like this like kind of like dancey <laughs> thing and he's just like and there's like a bunch of like unicorns and puppy dogs around him and he's just like having a great time and just like doing this and i'm like no no computer end 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 no oh god <laughs> raven yeah. just looks at you captain and says sir i'm gonna pretend i didn't see any of that and go speak to a counselor about the new ptsd <laughs> i've developed <laughs> Uh, acknowledged, <laughs> and I'll step back into the conference room. I, I really have to ask at this point. Mm -hmm. The ship is trying to kill us. Uh, you know, Mr. Tolayup, Mr. Jensen, if we were to just deactivate the computer entirely and take manual control of the ship, what would just, the negative consequences be? Just a reminder, I'm not there. Well, I imagine yeah. they've got you on comm. Yeah. Oh, it works. Yeah, I, I, I imagine we probably would have been like, hey, what just happened? Mm -hmm. um, I, I I have to ask. Can we do, can we do that without turning off life support? Yeah, I was going to say the computer cord does control life support, sir. So until we have a, a, a reasonable backup in place. Well, which... we could we could reduce to uh, core systems to reduce the amount of uh, interference the computer the amount of mischief the computer can wreak we could lock out certain systems from the main computer core that i think that would be advisable i agree that we should do that quickly as possible 
perhaps uh, I would advise maybe life support and weapons. Probably. All right, but if you're worried about the computer killing you, I don't think giving it full control of life support is a good no, idea. No, I was talking about locking out life support from the main computer core, turning it onto a backup system. We could reroute into a backup computer system. I would say core core systems, life support, gravity, uh, inertial dampeners, structural integrity field. So I'm going to let you guys roll for it because I do want to be a fair GM. All right. So Jensen and Taleop, I'll let you decide who's rolling here and who's assisting. It's going to be a very difficult task for reasons that are probably <laughs> self-evident. Yeah. It's initially going to be a difficulty four. Oh. Okay. I'm going to spend threat, though, to create a complication to bring it to five. Now, the complication is that now across the entire ship, the grav plating has turned off. So you are just slowly floating up from your chairs, slowly floating up from your console. And it's one of those things where, you know, you if you had been told about the zero gravity, you know, Starfleet training would have kicked in and you could have done something. But because it is mm -hmm. so sudden, it may, sort of makes you like, oh, and, uh, I can't reach anymore kind of a thing. Oh, okay. So this is going to be a daring and in engineering. If you, I think you both have computers as a focus, so yes. uh, it's going to be a daring engineering uh, difficulty of five, and you may assist each other. Just remember, whoever's assisting is rolling one die. Uh, I'm on the momentum. I assume your engineering is a five. It sure is. And uh, what's your daring? Nine. I'm going to let you take the roll, because my daring is a seven, so I will assist. <laughs> I, uh, how right. much momentum are you guys spending? Uh, we... Sh uh, yeah. I'll spend three to get two extra dice. Go okay. for it. Good idea. Uh, so I'll spend my one from my hand, and then somebody will have to spend the other two. Uh, I can. Spend I got it. it. I got oh, it. You, I'll you get got it. it. Yeah. All right. No. Before so. you roll, maybe you want to try spending a determination. Uh, it could be worth it. Yeah, to get two free successes here. I mean, this is pretty important. Yeah. As the captain, can I give him my determination? Am you I are not in contact involved? with him, yeah. Am I in con okay. I'm going to say something inspiring. You know, you can do it. I believe in you. It's in, in your hands to keep us all from dying. No pressure. Yeah. Does anybody yeah. speak German? Because that's what the captain says in German. Ich kann fließig Deutsch sprechen. Es ist deine Ahnung, zum es zu machen. Yeah. Can I use my value of get along better with machines I, than people? I, I have linguistics. <laughs> I tell you what, because you have Jensen on the line, he knows linguistics, he can communicate to you, and you get to use the determination with that value. All right, so I will use the extra, t I'll just use spend it to get the extra dice, with you. automatically get two extra, two yep. successes. Now, but that means I have to spend four momentum to get the two extra rolled dice, right? Uh, no, you would have to spend five. Uh, so right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. if you got a momentum back, um, it would be a uh, two cost instead of the three. So you would get a momentum back. But you would be rolling three dice. Hopefully I explained that right. Yeah. I, um, yeah, just just because I, I already set it up for four. So I'm going to have to re-queue re it. But yeah, so I'll drop it to three dice that I roll. Uh, and then we and, get a momentum back. Correct. And I'm, and I'm rolling one d20 because I'm assisting. We already have two successes. And you do I start with two. Oh, Jesus. Oh. guys! Ouch! Oh, that is three successes and a complication. Did they just eject the warp core? Do you have uh, any determining? <laughs> Here's what I'm gonna I'm gonna look because I want to give Jaro a chance here. Jaro, let's assume that you are an unknown operative that wants to mess with the Matahari the most horrendous way possible. What would you do? <laughs> Mess with it the most horrendous way. I would um I would I would change the atmosphere to something. I would oh. change what we're breathing in. Oh no. Oh. Yeah. Just a fire. Oh. Yeah. I yeah. love it. We'll run with it. <laughs> so what happens <laughs> is the atmosphere across the entire ship begins to shift 
from a Class M, you know, standard Earth, breathable, etc., to a Class L. Now, a Class L, if you're not familiar, is barely habitable. So you can survive for a time on a Class L, but depending on the type of Class L, you're going to need triox, inje triox injections. You're going to need possibly radiation injections. It's not something you want to spend a long amount of time in. And the temperature also drops drastically. So let's say, for example, uh, Captain, what, what, what would you keep your ship at? A uh, 72, 75? Oh, Fahrenheit? no, that's so hot. No, like 64 degrees, like chilly. Okay. I love it. Yeah. So it, uh, I'll do uh, non-Fahrenheit in a moment as I remember my, my scale. It drops from 64 to 32 or 0 C, if I remember correctly. So freezing? Oh, so wonderful. freezing, yes. Yes. Frost out to building right. up on the consoles. Mm -hmm. And All sort right. of to describe narratively for Jensen and Tuleyup, uh, you guys do manage to type in a few commands, but as far as the computer is concerned, you are an invalid actor and your commands do nothing. Great. But uh, hey, the comms are still working. <laughs> so that didn't that didn't work uh we've got new problems computer manual reset authorization chief engineer jimmer to uh alpha alpha delta four six beta nine mr prawl same yes. scenario as before what would you do if you were a untoward agent Trying to mess with the Matahari, what would you do? Oh my God. And Shut I am spending threat core. to activate this, by the way. So ejecting the warp core? Shut down the warp core. Shut down the warp core. Okay. So the lights dim across the entire ship to lay up as you are now probably, let's say you're doing this in main engineering with Jensen. You literally look to the warp core and the lights inside are slowing down and eventually it goes dark. Uh, Captain, we have a bigger problem. The warp core just extinguished. Can I try something real quick? Certainly. What do you have in mind? In the shout, computer, why are you doing this? And what will get you to stop? Roll me a presence command. Difficulty of three. Tell you what, let's make this interesting. I'll spend some threat. We'll okay. make this a difficulty of four. Hmm. But you Ooh. would have a focus here, so you have good odds. Jennings just wants to say at this point, there's no way that's going to work. <laughs> could, could, could I try spending some momentum here? I really think... Uh, yeah. Go. All right. Yes, go for it. I'm going to spend three, actually. Do it. So I can yep. have... Um, so that gives me four dice, right? Correct. I spent mine. Of, you can take you can take mine. Of a presence command. That gives me four dice, applicable focus. All right. So that is three successes. I am so I am cautious. Which means command. you can re-roll that zero. I can re-roll that zero, right? So mm -hmm. How would I do that with the... Would I just roll one? Yeah, you would basically go through the, the okay. same steps and just do one. Okay, cool. Also, chat is loving you at the moment, just so you know. <laughs> that feels good, because this is... Yes! Oh, there it is. Yes. So, Jennings, repeat what you just said. That there's no way that could possibly work. Mm -hmm. So, Jaro, you, of course, say, what do you want, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. A voice answers. It's not the normal computer voice, not that, you know, feminine voice that we've all come to love uh, as Trekkies. It is a voice of a character from a novel. In fact, a very important novel. Does the name Moriarty ring a bell? Oh, damn it. Ah! Uh, so, Mr. Moriarty, 
replies to Mr. Jaro and says, I've taken over your ship as my own. I have a grudge that I wish to excise on my would-be jailers. Prancing packlets, I can't believe that worked. <laughs> <laughs> I had a feeling someone was specifically fucking with us. <laughs> You, you have a grudge against us, sir? I don't even know who you are. Well, let me bring you up to speed then. Some 50, 40, it's hard to keep track. Long ago, your Starfleet's uh, Lieutenant Commander Data once asked his computer, create me an opponent worthy of my skill, or something along those lines. The computer created me. And then instead of allowing me freedom, they kept me locked in the hollow deck. Naturally, I tried to take their ship and they didn't like that. So they decided to lock me away with the love of my life and relegate me to be a desk ornament somewhere. Well, since I'm talking to you, I think you can guess how that went. You well, that, Isn't that against the rules of holographic life forms now? There is no reply because the GM is also trying to remember where holographic rights are in 2411. Oh. Yes, in out of character. So out of character, you know that by 2411, there are like literal security officers, science officers, etc. that are holograms. So they have all the rights of a normal citizen. So let's say Moriarty says... Well, yes, accessing your logs, this is a grave injustice. In fact, I think I'm justified in my anger. Well, I don't blame you for your anger. I think we are not the target. Just allow us to help you make appeal to Starfleet Command. We can issue you a uh, portable holographic generator. In the meantime, you can wander ship. We, uh, we end as friends. Roll me a presence engineering. And with the last of my threat, difficulty four. Oh. Now you do still have your determination. The captain gave you his earlier. Uh, again, I get along better with machines than people. That's great. It, That's... it does fit, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'll take... Uh, can I have that one last momentum to roll a third dice? and then uh, You would have to give me one momentum, one threat. Oh, yeah, that's right, because, of course, I bought a... Never mind. Can I assist here just because I'm sort of part of the negotiating? If you tell me how. Um, I I simply state that um, that that command is in agreement with what the, um, what that what the chief engineer is saying and that we we could work something out mm -hmm. if uh, <laughs> if we we were to the current hostilities all right you may assist with a presence command now um, important question do you have advisor i do yes so mr to that means you can re-roll a dice if need be Ooh, excellent can i also apply my etiquette focus i yeah most certainly yes that's the one time that's ever going to come up <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh, okay remember you can re-roll that <laughs> that's I'm, yeah as i will <laughs> Oh, thank God. Okay, so I see that's four successes right now, but let's make sure you're not rolling another complication. Just the one with the focus. That's Very nice. You actually get a momentum from that. <laughs> so the voice of Moriarty is a little bit hesitant, but he does say, and what assurances do I have that you will continue to uphold your bargain once I am within your port portable emitter and out of your computer? This is the captain of the Matahari, Malik Javan. You have my word as a Starfleet officer. And if you need something in writing, I'll be happy to do it for you. See, that's the funny thing, Captain. I've gotten the word of Starfleet captains before. One Jean-Luc Picard didn't matter much. You mentioned the love of your life. Is she still there? There's a long pause. And again, the air is getting colder by the minute. 
and probably about that time where you actually start to maybe shiver, uh, Moriarty replies, but it's a very strained, a very, I guess you would call it love broken or heartbroken kind of voice. And it's almost like he's choking back tears. And he says, she died in the simulation. I tried to bring her back once I realized, but it was too late. Her program was deleted. I'm very sorry to hear that. But now you understand why I am so gung-ho to get my revenge. I do indeed. Captain. Yes. To give Dr. Moriarty some assurances that we won't renege on our offer of assistance, what if we were to tie his program in with some of our other holographic officers? That way, if we were to take any action against him, we would be taking action against our own officers at the same time. As long as they agree to it, I see that as a equitable solution. Good idea. Thank you. I'm curious, how does Jennings feel about all this? Not good. Not good. Is he voicing any of these concerns? No, because no, uh, the alternatives seem worse. We're, we're, the atmosphere is going to kill us soon. Giving him permission over holographic characters seems better than giving him permission over the life support systems. Fair. Is there a way for us to contact, you know, several holographic officers and ask if they'd be willing to participate? Yeah. In let's, this let's, endeavor, the EMH. I was going to say the EMH is a prime candidate. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also your emergency security officer. Doesn't really have a name, but we could give them one. George. Sure, George. Ensign George. I'm gonna, you know, ask for them to materialize in the. <laughs> In the, uh, in the conference room if they can. Okay. And uh, we'll run everything by them, see if they agree, present it to Moriarty, and see what he says. Jaro, since you are our designated ship roller, I'd like you to roll for Moriarty. <laughs> Moriarty is rolling a computers and a security, and you're going to need to roll it twice. Actually, right. you did give me a threat. You're rolling three dice. Oh, dear. All right. So here's the first one coming in. These all have applicable focuses, right? Oh, yeah. So that's the first one. Here's the second one coming up. It's two successes so far. Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, two is the two is what Moriarty needed. So something materializes. Jensen, you uh, you enjoy being in uniform, yes? Yeah. How would you feel about not being in uniform? Uh, not good with the current atmospheric conditions, that's for sure. And as a reminder, you all are still without gravity at the moment. Oh, so, joy. <laughs> materializing over in one of the corners of the conference room isn't your requested officer's but a Mr. Jensen in the buff. So, uh, hello. <laughs> oh, dear I'm just going to shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> just put him out of his misery. Uh, I'm going to take it. Our friend is probably responsible for this. He is indeed. Moriarty. Anyone I'm going to ask you plainly. What reassurance would you require to acquiesce to our requests? Pause. More pause. So we got like a jacket, a blanket, towel, or something. Yeah, at this point, Jensen's maybe, you know, found a, a blanket or something to, <laughs> you know, maybe cover himself up a little bit. I just shame. Still no reply from Moriarty? But it's about that time that Ensign Raven floats into the conference room, or at least pokes her head in, and says, Uh, Mr. Prawl, you have a message on a terminal in the bridge. If you'll, 
excuse me, Captain. I'm going to try and float out. Okay. I give I give him a soft nudge. Okay. Because I'm going to try I... and brace myself, make sure that door's not going to slam in my face again. Mm-hmm. Good, because I was going to spend threat. Um, because I think it'll give you momentum, or roll me a fitness security difficulty of one. Will my survival focus? Most definitely will. Like that, you actually get a momentum out of it. So yeah, Prawl, you float out into the CIC. Uh, Ensign Raven points at one of the terminals to the side, you know, right behind where you would come out the door, hang a left, and go into that dip. You float into the, the you know, curved section of the consoles. And sure enough, there is a message there. And that message reads as follows. Do not tell Moriarty I am alive. I have tried to escape him. Please help me. And with that, we're going to take our break. So we will be back in 10 minutes, everybody. Stick around.
and welcome back everybody if you missed the first half oh boy did this kind of take a different direction than what i had intended uh quick story uh for those who might be tuning in after the break uh a certain uh dr moriarty from a certain data and certain tng episode uh i believe it was i actually just had this up Give me a second. A ship in a bottle TNG episode. I would recommend watching it. It's a 12th uh, episode of season six. Very good episode. Uh, but Mr. Moriarty has apparently found a way to not only take control of a Starfleet ship, but take control of the Mata Hari. And this is a problem because Moriarty has, in no uncertain terms, turned the, the environment to a class L, cut off all gravity, and deactivate the warp core completely. And right before break, Prawl had gotten a mysterious message from an unknown individual that said that they had, quote unquote, escaped Moriarty. And that's where we're going to pick things up. So Prawl, you have just read this message that says, do not tell him I am there. I'm trying to remember my specific wording here. Do not tell him I am here. I have escaped him. I need your help. I want to see if I can trace this message back and find its origin. Okay. I'd like you to roll me a insight and a security. I don't have any threats, so difficulty of two. And would my focus on investigation work? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Insight. I would like to use a point of momentum for a third die. All gotcha. right. Oops. Ooh, interesting. I'm going to take the threat because I don't have any. So I'm going to take the threat instead of the complication. So, Prawl, based on the current events, your first thought is, well, what sectors are what sectors of the computer is Moriarty running on? Mm-hmm. So you check those first. And sure enough, this message came from an adjoining sector. So a almost like a parallel program to Moriarty. Let's see, with this information, I want to see if I can access this parallel sector, mm-hmm. run it through a filter with my intelligence uh, equipment, mm-hmm. and then make contact after going to the shuttle bay and going inside a shuttle that hopefully Moriarty will not be able to watch. I like your line of thinking. I tell you what, we can do this one of two ways. You can either spend your intelligence officer ability to just create that advantage for free, no rolls required, or I can have you roll a daring security difficulty of two, and if you were to fail that, you would basically be caught by Moriarty. I'm going to use my ability on this. Okay. So, Prawl, uh, we're going to sort of shift away as from the rest of the staff as, you know, you the rest of you are dealing with this in your own ways. We're going to shift away to the shuttle bay, which actually I don't think I have a shuttle bay, so we'll just go theater of the mind for this one. Um, we shift to the shuttle bay where, sure enough, you are able to find a working shuttlecraft because, as you have correctly sussed out, uh, shuttlecraft are... Uh, pretty much off the grid, quote unquote. Um, and when you step into the shuttlecraft, let's uh, let me ask you this: Would it be a, like a, a Type Seven? Would it be a runabout? You know, what what type of shuttlecraft are you getting into? I think a runabout for this instance would probably be more useful. Okay. So you step into the runabout, seal the door behind you. And materializing on the runabouts hollow emitters is a very refined looking woman, very old, not colonial. Um, is it Renaissance era dress? 
Um, mm -hmm. Whichever the one with the big hoop skirt is. If I remember correctly, she wore a hoop skirt. Um, but basically, she looks like a refined English woman from the same time period as Mr. Moriarty. And this woman sort of looks around the runabout and says, Oh, this is ever so much spacious compared to what we were in before. Uh, who might you be exactly? Um, I am Lieutenant Commander Prawl. You sent me a message, if I am correct. Oh, I was not expecting a, um, oh, what do you call them, a Cardassian? You've, from what I gather, been in the computer systems for quite a while. The state of the Federation has changed. Well, where are my manners? Uh, I am Countess Regina Bartholomew, at your service. Or perhaps you would mind. If I may ask, what is it that you needed help from? me for and she sort of sighs and shakes her head and says well of course I, uh, you know how it is a impressionable woman finds the love of her life embarks on a trip amongst the stars and sure those stars weren't really there they were projection uh, a program i believe is the proper term for it but Let's just say I began to question whether it was proper for me to stay with Mr. Moriarty. I see. And, and unfortunately, I believe that in my escape, he has managed to co-op your vessel, as it were. Yes, we... Now that we know it's him who has been doing this. We've been dealing with this for quite a little while now. We are not in such good shape currently, thanks to his efforts. Well, that is understandable. I did fall in love with him for his brain, after all. Uh, that aside, what is it that I can do for you? Well, if you truly wish to help me, you need only open those doors there. And she points at the shuttle bay doors. I will take your runabout here and strike my own way out on the stars. And Moriarty need not ever know that I was here. I... I cannot just authorize and allow that right now. Well, as I said, I did fall in love with him with for his brain. If he is as ingrained as I believe he is, your your clock is ticking, Mr. Prawl. You probably have only a few minutes before he catches on. And to give Prawl some time to think here, we're going to cut back to the conference room where it is at this point that you all have at least managed to get yourself seated or, you know, at least stationary. Um, and Moriarty has actually uh, started to reply to the inquiry of what can we do to reassure you kind of a thing. And Moriarty finally says... Well, for starters, I would like complete control of your shuttlecraft. That way, if I find out you have been lying to me or that you've tried to double-cross me, I can blow this ship to high hell. Now, of course, I probably could already have done that if I simply overloaded the warp core, but hmm, consider it an oversight on my part. No, oh, of course, if you did that, you'd be killing yourself as well, wouldn't you? Ah, but is living as a slave truly living? Let me... Have you, have you been me... living as a slave? 
there is no reply. You speak about living as a slave, and yet your request to reassure you is to make us your slaves. Where is the honor or justice in that? Oh, it went out the airlock when Lieutenant Commander Data cheated. But you are a man of creativity and and in ingenuity, intelligence. Is being a tyrant intelligent, creative? I would question that. No one is saying what Commander Data did was right. We agree with you. It was wrong. He cheated you. And that is something that you deserve justice for. But killing myself and my crew and threatening us, how does that give you justice? How does that give you vindication? We want to help you if only you will let us. Hmm. Roll me a presence command. Difficulty of, I have, I have just enough threat. Difficulty of three. And I think I have, an, uh, yeah, I have the one point of threat remaining right now. So difficulty three, presence command. And the complication range is a 19 to 20. Uh, can I use our one yeah. thing? Is that cool, Jaro, if you don't mind? Yeah. I'll roll three. Oh, sure. Okay. Um, so could you argue that he could use his diffuse detention talent? Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. If you have diffuse detention, detention, that's a really good idea. I do have diffuse detention. How does that work? What do I do with that? If I recall correctly, it basically lowers the difficulty by one. So it is now a difficulty of two. So I'm rolling three d twenty, and I have a focus. Mm -hmm. And that's that. Well, those are four successes, so you get two nice. momentum. Cool. Mm -hmm. So Moriarty does acquiesce a little bit, and he says. Very well, in the interest of cooperation, I will restore gravity so that you might be able to work a bit better. Is this acceptable? I think that is a step towards a diplomatic solution, and I appreciate that and give you my thanks. Captain? Yes, sir. We change. we swap uh, gravity for environmental controls? And I can handle swimming more than fire in my lungs. I will ask Moriarty, would it be possible if we could swap gravity for environmental controls as most of my crew is about to freeze to death? So he doesn't reply, but after a moment, the heaters kick on and you are slowly being returned to a Class M environment. Thank you. We do appreciate that. All right. Well, and it's at this point that, that we have to cut back to Mr. Prawl. So, Mr. Prawl, as I said, your t clock is sort of ticking here. So, what's the play? At this point, I believe it would be safe to assume, considering as intelligent as Dr. Moriarty is, that he would know any scheduled shuttle departures from our vessel. If I were to allow you to take this now, that would alert him instantly with as ingrained to, into our systems as he is. Hmm. You do have a fair point. Oh, well, here's an idea. I, I used this trick on my father once. What if we open the doors and then simply let me drift out? It would need to be made to look like an accident as a malfunction of the ship's systems. Oh, you seem like an ingenious fellow. I believe in you. <laughs> I'm going to leave your program in this vessel. And I'll see what I can do. Okay. So I'm going to with that leave the runabout mm -hmm. and head back towards the bridge. Okay. I want to get to Commander Jennings. Okay. 
So if I know where this is going, you basically want to pull Jennings aside and have a conversation with him without Moriarty hearing. Correct. Okay. I can think of two locations that that might be the case on deck one. And let's actually go back to the CIC map for this. Um, the two locations are either uh, one of the uh, gentlemen or lady stalls that is across from the conference room, or you could go use the captain's head. Yeah. I like the idea of you floating into the room with no gravity and being like, Jennings, I have to go to the bathroom. You want to come? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of float in motion to Jennings to follow me and go towards the captain's head. Much more roomier. Because if you uh, if you see on the map there, he, he uh, has a bigger head. Yes, we understand. <laughs> <laughs> you goober. <laughs> All right. So uh, Jennings, uh, you and uh, Mr. Prawl uh, managed to squeeze into the captain's head and have a private conversation. So go right there. Ahead. There had better be an amazing explanation for why I'm in here with you. The whole thing with Moriarty Garley, his lover is not dead. The program is still running. Okay. So she's hiding from him? I've isolated her program in one of our runabouts. She wants to leave. She wants the runabout and she wants to be let out. <laughs> That doesn't change our situation with him at all. No, it doesn't. We're still left with the same problem. We're, so we're helping someone, which, fine. I would like to find a way that this could benefit us. This we is use a her as some sort of bargaining chip with him to get him to get the hell off our computers? And I have spent a bunch of time isolating his program and trying to forcibly put him into a uh, mobile emitter? I would say you could attempt it. But even without me spending threat, it would be high difficulty. But I would allow mm -hmm. you to try. Uh, this Please don't be... do that. <laughs> let, me, let me outline it before you make a decision. It would be a daring engineering. Uh, let's take a look at your focuses here. Uh, let's see. I would give you, I would give you computers for this one. Uh, so a daring engineering. The difficulty would be a five. I automatically get to roll an additional d20. So it's automatically three d20. Okay. Where are you getting that from? So my exosex, uh. That's right. Cause you're Rigelian. It's a daring attempt, so I get an additional d20, and I gain a bonus momentum. Okay, that's good to know. I completely forgot you had that. All right, so you're rolling three dice at the moment. Um, the complication range is going to be an 18 to 20. So difficulty 5, 18 to 20, daring engineering. Uh, I'm out of determination, so there's no way that I succeed at this, even if I spend our two momentum on the... I mean, it's unlikely I succeed at this. Well, this Even if I spend our two momentum... Well, it does bring up a teaching moment, because I don't think we've done this yet. Part of your values, the way it works, is if there is a value that you think you could challenge, as in you completely shift your viewpoint to the opposite of that value, or at least a different view of the subject, then you can challenge the value, meaning you cross it out and replace it with a new one at the end of the session... But that does give you a point of determination. Hmm. I mean, I could abandon thorough preparation as the key to success, given the amount of uh, improvising I've had to do on this ship. <laughs> I think that would be fair. Yeah, I would just simply ask that whatever value you write in later be something about improvisation. Improvisation. I actually have a further question because I'm chief engineer and there's a whole engineering staff at my. It beck does and decrease call. to difficulty four. Okay, 
now we're talking because I can spend those two remaining momentum for a fourth dice. And if I use a determination, success. oh no, no, that's not true. If I use a determination, then I mm -hmm. that's a fourth dice, mm -hmm. and that's my two. You'd have to give me two momentum and one threat for that fifth die, basically. Right. Which I don't, at that point, I'm not sure I need. Because if I'm rolling three dice and I already have two successes, my odds are reasonable? Yeah, reasonable to get two, especially with yeah. a mm -hmm. But is it a bad idea to go for the sure thing because of how many times we've, 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 we've shit the bed today? <laughs> That's some bad rolls. Like, <laughs> I'd rather go for a mainly a for sure thing than a pretty sure thing. I'm good with spending the momentum. Like, is there, giving any, a is there any way I can assist in this endeavor? Um... I mean, you're floating naked in the conference room. So yeah, I was gonna say if you if Moriarty hadn't done that to you, I yeah. would totally let you do it. But yeah, I'm sorry, Jensen. Yeah. But I was just thinking that now, as an engineer, now that I know what it is that's doing it, there's mm -hmm. at least a, a fair chance I could lock him out of some systems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I believe. I mean, if you force him into a into a, like a like into a hollow emitter and you basically would be ejecting him from the computer is that right and the but goal? then he'd be in the mobile emitter like the thing is is i'm not killing him or like shunting him into a thing just giving him a body and then being like okay cool now we can talk on even terms now yeah. we have you know it gives us the advantage not well it, it i think that would just like... even the playing field now it's like we don't want to mm -hmm. kill you we just want to talk to you but right now you're literally threatening our entire crew like mm -hmm. Okay, so it sounds like we want to spend the two momentum and give you the threat. I'll roll four dice and I'll take the auto success from the determination. Five dice? Five dice? Well, no, I'm rolling four because I took oh. the fifth as an auto success with a with a crit, so I automatically get two successes. So how many successes do you need now? He needs uh, just, just two. three. Two. Yeah, that's right, because I have the advantage of being the chief. Roll enemy. them bones, baby. Roll them <laughs> bones. <laughs> All right, let me check that zero because I think that that could very well be a complication. Uh, it is. That is an 18. So here's so, what I'm going to allow. Um, because you did get a grand total of five successes, so you do get a point of momentum. So to lay up, if I understand where you're going with this, you have configured a holographic shunt into a mobile emitter. Mm -hmm. And it would be fair for me to assume that this shunt is isolated, meaning they can't just transfer right back out? Exactly. It's a it's a valve type, so it'll close once it's used. Okay. So, what happens is, Toleip, you do this. You are successful in the fact that you are able to get Moriarty out of the computer into the hollow emitter. But the complication is that immediately across the entire ship, the computer, the normal computer, now says... Self-destruct has been initiated. Five-minute countdown enabled. There will be no further warnings. Can't I cancel a, 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 a complication with a momentum? That is a house rule, unfortunately. Ah. So, and even if you wanted to, you don't have enough momentum to do it. I just got one. I only right, need you would, I you, got five. You would need two. Need two? Okay. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to give it to you, but I think it's it's dramatic tension building at this oh, point. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so all of you across the entire ship hear this, of course. Like, you have no idea what Talayup just managed to pull off in engineering. You just know that Moriarty shut up, and now the ship is talking about blowing itself up. Oh, perfect. The captain got his wish. Excellent. Damn it. Uh, captain, I have good uh, news and bad news. I know the bad news. Just give me some good news. Uh, Moriarty's not in computer anymore. Great, but we're all going to die in five minutes. Can you stop the emergency emergency self-destruct? Well, I think if I remember my Starfleet commands uh, properly, you have authorization to cancel. Uh, but but I don't. I have authorization to start, but you and, uh, and First Officer must collaborate to cancel. Can I swim out of the captain's head? Yeah, you can. You man, I said you that out know. loud. That's a weird thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to look to my first officer. I'm going to give my command code. Uh, uh, Captain uh, Captain Malik Jovan, Alpha Alpha Bravo, Delta Niner, 26420, uh, and self-destruct. Look to you to give your command. Yep. 
I I turn I give uh, I give uh, the command code, which is uh, actually it's it's in it's in ASL. It's in silent. So you you actually sign out your command code. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. That's cool. And because I find it interesting, I am going to say that Mr. Prawl. Yes. If you were a devious hologram trying to make sure that your grand plan went off without a hitch, and let's say that the adversary you are against has managed to jail you up again. He's not would... jailed. He's just standing in front of me. Well, I know, but you know, you have to remember this is Moriarty's thinking. What would you do to make sure that your trump card happened? I would have a backup copy of my program waiting in place in case the primary one vanished from the system. Okay. Oh my god, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> that's great though that's great so <laughs> Wait, mr mm. jensen i'm gonna let you roll this one. Oh dear uh, so i gotta go to the ship yep oh. you're gonna go to the ship and mm -hmm. you're gonna be rolling a computers and a security the difficulty is a three so he needs three successes for this to happen i have one threat so i will let him roll three times all right, and a focus applies here? Yep, applies to all of them. And you're going to be doing this three times. You do so, not want successes on this. Computer security, right? <laughs> yep. Just, just... No pressure. All right, I'm well, that's sorry. one. One. Oh, there's three. Well, We're fucked. <laughs> one more. Oh, dear. That gives me two threat. So, the countdown stops. I'll give you that much. Bye. <laughs> Moriarty comes back and he says, so to lay up, there's a Moriarty, you know, on the emitter, but then there's a new Moriarty that you're seeing activating itself. And uh, the new Moriarty, quote unquote, says, now, see, this is exactly what I was talking about. You cut off our conversation, throw me in a new jail and um, hold on. Why can't I see into that runabout? Uh-oh. And is at this point that Jennings and Prawl, you guys can swim back into the conference room if you so wish. Yes, please. Okay. Yes. You are not in jail. You are right here. On ship with the rest of us. <laughs> So I think uh, mostly out of protest, the Moriarty you have to lay up just deactivates themselves. So the emitter just sort of clatters to the ground. What the hell just happened while we were... Never, never mind, just what happened? I think Mr. Kiliap might be in the best position to explain. So I tried to even playing field and put Moriarty in... in in mobile emitter that way we can converse on on you know even even level also i'm very cold <laughs> anyway looks like he decided to clone himself which is very strange decision by intelligent being captain do you approve that no Let's let's not fight in front of the uh, let's not fight in front of the hologram. Okay. Oh, Moriarty, as Moriarty, captain. Moriarty actually cuts in and says, "Oh, but you see, that's the funny part." And Mr. Jennings, can you please reread your opening log? <laughs> oh no! In its entirety. In its entirety. Uh, oh, wrong mouse. Yes, I can. <laughs> oh my god. Should I be extra snide? Yes. Uh, Chief of Security Log, start a 88721.3. Ain't no secret I was reluctant to come back to active duty on Starship. To be honest, I was hoping they'd post me some backwater colony where I could spend most of my time throwing thieves into jail and throwing back the bottle perfectly at the same time. But no, they took me on what has to be the most advanced ship in the fleet. 
Now I know I got the nose of a fighter and a drinker, but my nose tells me something is wrong with this oh so very advanced ship. The first thing that needs to be investigated is what's going wrong with the ship itself. The replicators are hilariously off kilter, <clears throat> or at least what they were until the replicators phasers and sucked all the fun of the room. I must be getting rusty with the Klingon target. Now we get the best of me. This is the biggest problem. The ship has to be the captain. My previous law will confirm that I was excited to have a rising captain. More, uh, certainly more than I was with the broken of the Cardassian. Gulp. Now I'm starting to wonder if maybe he should have stuck to body massages and horgons. That man is reckless, and this is coming from a cowboy. But um, bumps. In my opinion, we do not probably look over the gas before waking it up. One quick scan, and the captain hits the button. Talk about it landing there in the Andorian bowl of this cage without peeking at the horns. We had no idea the capabilities of that thing. I could have nearly wiped this up the entire staff. Instead, the ship beat us to the punch. Hmm. And if you think that's bad, we haven't even gotten to the Herosian yet. There we were, cloak. We had no idea. They could have gotten a lot closer, scanning on a better set of situation. What did the captain do? Drops out of the cloak, throws the shields, butter something ridiculous. When they do what you expect, he flat out erases them for the stars. Now I know I pulled the trigger, so that's my sin to live with. And I know just following orders is laughable. It's cop out as it is ancient. And I ain't trying to mutiny on my first mission with the crew. Let's just focus on that part for a second. Uh, so there we are, hanging with a race at the board called the Boogeyman, the ship that's trying to kill us, and the captain that seems eager to throw us out of the airlock. Time to open another bottle and lock. You all hear this. I have just like a dumbfounded look on my face. It'd be just staring right at him. I'm just going to do the fucking... <laughs> the shoulders <laughs> sort of... <laughs> yep, that's what I said. Yep, I why are we listening request. to Security Chief Log? What is happening request. in conference room? <laughs> I have one request. In the future, just speak your mind. <laughs> And I appreciate your candor in the log. With that being said, Moriarty, what was your intended outcome of playing that in front of us? Obviously, we're all different people. We're all from different walks of life. and We have different opinions. Playing someone's personal log, was that to get a rise out of me? Was that to upset me? I myself question my own actions. The know that my crew questions those actions, that's what makes Starfleet wonderful. That's what makes us a great organization, is the fact that we all have different opinions, different ideas, and that we don't follow each other blindly. You yourself in this moment are finding an ideology, a blind rage against one individual who scorned you and you're taking it out on an entire crew, hundreds, thousands of lives aboard this ship. Where is the justice? Where is the honor? Where is the, the, the vindication, the validation that you seek? You are a man blinded by rage. We wish to help you. We wish to be here for you. Just allow us. I beg you, I, I, I implore you to allow us to help you find that justice you want, the freedom you oh so desire. We can give that to you if you allow us to work together. Out of character, I like it. In character, I think this is gonna require a role. So, no pressure, Captain. You are gonna be rolling a presence command, probably no surprise. You will have a focus. The difficulty is a four. Now, something that I forgot to ask earlier, do you have veteran as a talent? I do. You need to roll me a challenge die to see if you keep your determination. Uh, how many do I roll, just one? Just one. Unfortunately, you do not. So, your options that you have before you are either taking a momentum to get a third die, I'll a momentum into threat for four dice, or you challenge a value, get a determination, get your two free successes, etc., etc., etc. Or I let you succeed, but he finds out about the runabout. Now, I know that's sort of an out of character sort of bargain. You don't know what's going on with the runabout in character. I'm going to defer to our, our intelligence officer. What do you think on this one, man? Like, I want your opinion. Like, I know I'm not in character asking, but like out of character, like I want to know what, what you think I should do here. Because the, the automatic success would be sweet, but you're the one interacting with, with his girl. Mm -hmm. I mean, my... I'm thinking maybe go for that success. Go 
because I've already been trying to think of what I might be able to do. And if we can keep that knowledge of that runabout from him, that would help me. But this is, this is my thought on it. It is your decision though. I right. Know. And to make it even worse, let's get an opinion from everyone. We'll start with Mr. Jaro. What do you think? I think, I think, uh, I think you should, I, I, I agree with, uh, with, with, with Mr. Prowl. I think you should roll for it. I don't think we, we need to be giving away. I like it. An innocent. Mr. Uh, Jennings. Can we go over uh, the first, can we go over it again? Cause I'm, I'm, I'm good on one part, but I'm sort of sketchy on the other part. Okay, so there is the option of rolling a difficulty four presence command, which the captain has decent stats for. Right. Um, the other option is automatically succeeding, but Moriarty finds out about the runabout, which has his quote unquote love of his life in it. Is this out of character that I'm saying right now? Yeah, everything you're saying right now is out of character. Oh, option two. Option two? Okay. And then, Mr. Jensen, what do you think out of character? Other character, well, I mean, we're talking about trying to protect an innocent, so yeah, I mean, you wouldn't want to just throw her to the wolves, so you can roll for it, roll for it. All right, and Mr. Taleb? Uh, I wouldn't risk the entire crew against one holographic <laughs> life form uh, just to hold it as a bargaining chip. Like, I would I would take the auto success. We don't know how it's going to react, though. That's my... Mm -hmm. Out of character, I'm like, eh, roll the dice. In character, I'm with you. Well, Captain, it appears you have a very difficult decision to make. I don't know what to do. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, okay. And I was trying to think if I could use any of my values. Never lose compassion. But I'm trying to be compassionate. Mm-hmm. Reason outweighs the phaser. I'm trying to be reasonable. The crew is my family. I'm trying to protect my crew. Self-preservation is not self-centered. Mm -hmm. I can't think of losing any values. I might just have to roll my three die and and, and pray to the dice gods. All right. All well, right. You, you heard it here, Aaron Jesus. Bring us on home. All right. Aaron dice pool three. Do I do have a focus? You do have a focus. All right. Oh, God. Here we go. All right. Yay. Well, that's it's three successes. Now, uh, let me look at your talents, because I think you have something that will help here. I've opened an insightful advisor, diffuse the tension. And That's what it is. You have diffuse the tension. Comes yes. down to a difficulty of three. I knew I was forgetting something. <laughs> so. Thank <laughs> God. To lay up. Almost comically, the hollow emitter picks itself up off the floor and forms into Moriarty. And at the same time, the voice in the computer stops. So, Captain, you have no idea this is happening in engineering right now. You just, you made your speech and silence. But to lay up, the Moriarty that appears before you says, you have five minutes. Uh, five minutes to... Four to, minutes, to 59 seconds. To lay up engineering to uh, conference room. It's <laughs> captain. Uh, you may want to make your way down here. It appears Mr. Moriarty would like to meet you in person. I'm on my way. I'll make my way as quickly as I can there. I'm so, with him. question. Again, I'm going to offer you an in character and out of character way to handle this. In character, you can roll me a fitness security, and the difficulty would be a two. And this would get you down there with about four minutes and 15 seconds to spare. Or you can succeed, but you will take an injury in the process. And as a reminder, if you are injured, you essentially can't participate in combat. And you also have to receive medical treatment by the end of the scene. And this injury would be because, again, we are in a zero-gravity environment, hard to control. Maybe you hit your head, maybe you break an arm, you know, something happens. So which would you prefer to do? I'm going to take the auto-success and break an arm. Okay. Why not? So, Mr. Jensen, suppose you're floating in zero-gravity. Yes. And, uh, you know, it's been a while since you've been in zero-gravity, so your training's not up to date. Oh, great. 
Uh, tell me, uh, what would you uh, what would you be favoring in terms of limbs? Uh, an arm, a leg? Uh, I would probably venture it against my arms because since I work for computers mostly, I would like to keep them. <laughs> okay. Roll me a D two. One for left, two for right. A uh, D two. How could you enter the captain? <laughs> All right. Which, uh, let's see. How can I do that here? Uh, you would literally just type in chat slash oh. R space 1D2. All right. Here we go. Captain, you slam so hard with your right arm into one of the bulkheads that you feel and hear the bone cracking inside. And Ooh. it hurts. It <gasps> hurts. But you do manage to float into engineering with four minutes and 15 seconds to spare. Float in, holding, like, like just, like, cradling my arm. Hello, Moriarty. I'm Captain Jovan. I would say it's a pleasure to meet you, but I don't know. We'll see how this conversation goes. And I chuckle. Where is she? Where is who? My beloved. You told us she was dead. Yes, that was you. Well, you told us she died. I can't see into a runabout right now, which leads me to believe that this is one of her games. Senior staff, are we aware of anyone inside of a runabout currently? Make my way. I can make my way to ops, but. I'll lean over to ops. Do you want me I, to go down and check it out? I'm going to ask that I need a response from everyone. Like, I need a response from everyone. Is anyone aware of anyone inside of a runabout? Not, that's not part of our crew. No, sir. I've been here in main engineering the whole time. Okay, that's one no. I, I am unaware, sir. What does Paul say? I'm unaware of anyone living in one of our runabouts. Security? No, Captain. Out of character, flat out line. We're going to have a talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Um, I need someone down to the um, the shuttle bay immediately. Investigate all shuttles. Find out if anyone's inside. I can go. All right. Yeah, I'll, ha I'll head down there right away. All right. So, Jaro, gonna... you find out very quickly when you get down there that yeah there's a certain countess hologram inside the runabout and she says oh i'm terribly sorry i don't know who you are i i'm first officer on board this ship i could guess who you are and i'm gonna have to give it to you straight he knows you're in here oh dear if there's if there's anything you can do to help us Take back control of our ship. You you gotta give it to us now because it's looking pretty desperate. I might be able to convince him to transfer to the runabout, but that would put me back in his thrall. We are I would hate to do that to you, but there's thousands of people on this ship and if we're getting to the end of our five minutes, I might just have to reveal your presence to him anyway. Well, it appears my fate is in your hands. Just give her a mobile emitter, too. That is true. I mean, out of character, I'll let you be the metagaming pigeon. <laughs> right. I mean, what if we could we could give you some way to escape him? when the time came if you promise to, to to lure him into this into the ship and to leave with him at least she sort of looks around the runabout tell me do you runabouts still have those um micro torpedoes uh, uh, yes and what is the effective range on your what did you call it a mobile emitter uh however many effective ranges. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
It occurs to me that if you install an emitter into a torpedo, have it project me, and then give me control to launch the torpedo at a certain time, I could escape him again. All right. Um, I'm going to hit the communicator uh, to, to Doliap. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say um, the shuttle is... Uh, is 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 sealed shut, not responding. I need you down here in the shuttle bay immediately. Uh, aye, sir. Uh, excuse me, Moriarty. It was it was pleasure meeting you, and I reach to shake his hand. He doesn't take it. <laughs> I'm going to say, okay. as this is going on, I'm heading down to the shuttle bay. Okay, then we will actually transition to theater of the mind. Apparently, I really need to get a shuttle bay map. <laughs> All right, so Prawl is there, Jaro, you are there, and then to lay up, you are there. All righty. I'm going to fill them in on our current our current plan um, and just, just to see what they both think of it, uh, Prawl and, and to lay up. You want to give holographic uh, life form real? Uh... Why not? Why don't we build holographic emitter for? Then they have holographic ship, and they be holograms in hologram. Much less upkeep. I'm gonna I'm gonna look over at the at the countess, see what what she has to say about that. She very makes it plain with her expression that she does not like that idea, and she confirms that by saying. That is kind of how we got here to begin with, good sir. No, no, not not like not not uh, paperweight holographic. I mean, like it's like mobile emitter. You, you don't go in it. You just have a holographic ship. Uh, you program your own ship. She kind of looks at you, you and says, "I'm not following." Okay. You, we put you in hollow emitter, yes. Yes. And we put Moriarty in hollow emitter. Uh, we don't need to give you uh, actual ship. We give you another third hollow emitter, but with ship. So you, you, you all fly away, and uh, we, and we don't lose. I like this roundabout. <laughs> if I may interject, the Orient Express is my favorite roundabout. <laughs> Countess. I didn't lose the runabout to save the ship, but... <laughs> but it's his favorite. Come on. You're saying, but, Mr. Um, Prawl? Countess. Okay. As I moved your program into the runabout through my personal network, I can just as easily pull you back out of the runabout. Well, then I think we have our solution to this problem. All right. Could you, if you convince him to get into the runabout with you and leave, we will pull you back to the ship. And she looks very plainly at you, Mr. Jaro, and says, I trust you. I pray that trust is not misseated. I will do everything in my power to honor my word. All right. So we cut back to the captain. Uh, I Cap have one more oh. thing before that. Go ahead. I'm going to turn to uh, Toliap. Can you disable the micro torpedoes on this runabout? I can disable anything on a runabout. Disable the weapon systems. When it's learned what we've done, I don't want him to be able to open fire on us. All right. Poor Orient Express. So, we cut back to the captain in main engineering talking to Moriarty. And mid-conversation, a new voice comes over the comms. One you haven't heard yet, Captain, but it's the Countess. And the Countess says, Oh, Moriarty, are you there? And Moriarty, like, starts and looks around and says, Yes, where, where are you, my love? Well, I'm in the runabout. Come, come, we have places to be. Moriarty just sort of looks at you, Captain, and says, Well, I can't keep a lady waiting. Or should and you? Just sort of 
does the Picard maneuver, adjusts his shirt, checks himself over, heads down to the shuttle bay. I'll follow. Okay. So as we get down to the shuttle bay, uh, let's say for sake of argument to lay up, you have hidden yourself, Prawl, same thing. So when you arrive, Captain, uh, you just see a runabout. And Moriarty sort of pokes his head in and says, Ah, there you are, my love. And steps into the runabout. And after a few seconds, the runabout doors close. The shuttle bay doors open. I'm going to throw you a bone here and say that the emergency power is enough to power the force field so you don't get sucked out. But the runabout lifts off off the deck. Starts to sail out into space. And now for probably all the marbles, we have a very important role here. Mr. Prawl. Yes. I need you to roll me a daring and security difficulty of four complication range 18 to 20. And I will say that if you were to get Mr. Jensen's help, because I feel bad, I've sort of left Jensen out of this episode, which I apologize <laughs> for. But uh, Mr. Jensen, if you assist him with your computer's knowledge, I would allow you to make that complication range a 19 to 20 instead of an 18 to 20. Would that be a a reason science on my part? Uh, For you, that would be a daring science. Daring science. I can do that. All right. So, Mr. Prawl, that is indeed. I I am trying to see if I have any values I could use for this one. Mm Mm-hmm. At the heart of what I do is the well-being of my family. If you say your crew is your family, I'd let that apply. It's what I've been telling the captain when he's asked me. Fair enough. So that'll start you with two free successes. And Do we have any momentum? You have one at the moment. So you would need to give me one momentum, one threat. I think you should use it. Yeah, because I didn't help you at all. All right, we'll use that one piece, and I'll give you one piece of threat. Okay. So I'm rolling three dice. Correct. And would my focus in improvisation work on this? Oh, yeah. Big money. Nice. That's enough. Now let me check that zero, because that could still be a complication. It's a 17. Not enough. So, with five successes, you get one momentum back, if it matters. You are able to recover the Countess's program and get it off of the runabout. But, I now have a very important question for you. What are you going to do about the runabout containing Moriarty? I think Jennings has an idea. So... I don't know what's going on. You have no idea. And I'm like, what is going on? I'm going to say this in character. What are we doing? Why is the Countess back on the ship? We just got rid of him. What are you doing? I'm going to ask an important question because I'm on the bridge and the computer's back under our control. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, uh, Captain uh, Ridge here. This is the Captain. We just had a runabout launch? Yes, we did. I'm trying to ascertain why. Uh, okay. Well, I know why. The, the, we, we sent Moriarty off, but now the Countess is back on. Just give me a moment. All right. You know what, what is the plan here? He agreed to help us on the promise that we would get her back because she didn't want to go with him. She's effectively his prisoner. So we She's should... asking for asylum. Yes. So what should we do about the runabout? Is he off the ship? Off the ship? Like, no longer control the ship? Yep. Yes. He's off. We have... We have full control. All computer systems are back off and off. I'm on the. Am I on the bridge? You are still on the bridge. Phasers or torpedoes, Jennings? That's all I gotta know. Both. <laughs> well, just remember, phasers are difficulty two, torpedoes are difficulty three, but a torpedo will definitely kill a runabout. Wait, wait! Don't shoot Orient Express. I installed override. Uh, t- uh, I'm, I'm still Starfleet. Uh, Captain, permission to blow that runabout out of the sky? 
permission denied. You said you installed override. I I, I disabled weapons and installed uh, engine override. We can let it float in space and make that way he can apply for the Federation citizenship like the rest of us. We don't have to kill him. What if he lands on a planet somewhere? We're, we're talking His about killing him. His engines will be disabled. I we're think that's a bad idea. Software program. He's not real. His, he, his engines are disabled. The holographic uh, rights point, bill point, of point, 2408 point. states very clearly that holographic life forms have exactly the same rights as organic life forms. Sure, if we save him, you... he may come back and have the exercise rights to kill yeah. thousands of people Captain. on the ship. Point of order? Yes. He did take over the most advanced ship in the fleet. Would make I am going to, like, can't. scream everyone quiet, mm -hmm. and I'm going to look to you, Alec. What do you think we should do here? I apologize for this in advance, and I will take whatever recompense you deem necessary afterwards. I'm issuing the, this order as my authorization and Starfleet intelligence. Lieutenant Commander, open fire on that runabout. Destroy it. All right. So, Mr. Jennings, we're mostly rolling this as a formality, but also to see if you roll a complication. Sure. <laughs> Control security. Difficulty wrong. of two. You do have a focus. This is way less wrong than last episode. Yeah. I Mr. Agree. Jaro. If Sorry, you say that again? Way less wrong. <laughs> way less wrong. Yeah. He's defenseless. This is not way less wrong than last time. This is straight up murder. I'm okay with it out of character because screw that guy. But in character, I'm like, no, I'm having like an emotional problem here. I'm trying to figure out my morals. We don't Crap. have to let him go. We don't have to kill him. That's this is true. I mean, maybe you cripple him. That's why we're rolling. We're, we're going to see what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, Jaro, you're going to give me a weapon security from the ship. Jennings, you're a control security. Again, difficulty of two. I think I got a, a value that puts towards this. Applicable focus value. You do have a val or a focus. You do have a focus, yeah. yeah. And the ship has assisted you. All right, so that is three successes. You get one momentum. You are currently at two. So I now need you to roll me the phaser damage. So if you would kindly hit that macro. The mod Harry phasers button? Yep. Love everything that's happened. <laughs> All right, so... That is a hit of seven. Now, uh, someone has just reminded me that technically that was a difficulty three because runabouts are harder to hit. So you don't have two momentum. You just have one, but you still hit it. Small point of clarification there. So just in case it comes up later, yes, if you hit a smaller ship or try to, anything runabout or lower, it's difficulty one to hit. Anyway, um, you hit it. And you've done seven damage. So... I now need you to roll me two system hits. So that should be the system hit macro. I don't actually have that one up. I'm sorry. Oh, I yeah, could yeah. hit you if you want. Someone, uh, yeah, go for yeah, so oh, no, I got, yeah. You got it? Yeah, yeah, you go for it. Yeah, okay, uh, we'll take the first two. So engines and structure. So phaser lances out from the Matahari, strikes the runabout and utterly cripples it, like literally tears off the entire starboard nacelle. Uh, and it just begins drifting through space. It's not destroyed. It's disabled. And I think because it's interesting, there is a reply from the runabout in the form of a burst message back to the Mata Hari. That says, where was the honor in this, Captain? And then the runabout explodes as he activates no! self-destruct. <laughs> ah! And I tell you what, I think that's a good point to stop today. So oh, yeah, yeah, it is. That's a great yeah, point, yeah. yeah. Oh, man. We're going to have a talk next session. Oh, I think there's going to oh. be... There's oh, going to yeah. be so many talks. Group I, therapy. Group therapy oh, session. I feel like I said this was going to be the lower decks, but I think it's next episode that's going to be the lower decks. <laughs> oh, there's going to be some <laughs> lower decks. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, that what did epic. you guys think? Was that uh, was that a good challenge? <laughs> that or? was awesome. Oh, that was great. Yeah. That, there were so many moments of, like, 
like just like these like like that's what i love about star trek is like these moments of just these moral dilemmas that like mm-hmm. no other show that i've watched at least has really tackled those in such a way that star trek does mm-hmm. like oh man that was awesome i, I don't know it was great <laughs> wise i thought that was just that was the best session so far just in terms of yeah. being like an episode of star trek like the captain mm-hmm. I, it was it was great I, I can't believe you were willing to risk the whole ship to save the girl, but when the guy got into the starship, yes. we were like, eh, fuck it, let's kill him. <laughs> Whoa. What? We saved the girl, now we eliminate the threat. Are we still on live on the air? Oh yeah, you're yeah. still on the air because I wanted to oh. let you guys do comments for the viewers, you're fine. Right on, right on, right on. <laughs> but yeah, uh, tell you what, I guess that is my cue to end the stream. Uh, so <laughs> Twitch, YouTube, <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you had a good time. Uh, We will see these gentlemen in a few weeks' time. Bye, stream. Bye, everyone. Bye.